Hey guys, in this video we're going to do some fluid statics practice problems, uh, two multiple choice questions and two free response questions, and we're going to do them with full solutions worked out. So here we go. Before we do just one quick thing, I would highly recommend when you see the question pop up on the screen, pause the video for a second, try to answer it yourself, and then I will go into the solution. But I won't remind you to pause after each one. Um, so just try to do that for yourself so you can practice. All right, so this first question is a multiple choice question and it says blocks A, B, and C have the same volume. Rank in order from largest to smallest the sizes of the buoyant forces F sub A, F sub B, and F sub C on blocks A, B, and C. All right, so we have these three blocks floating at different depths. Uh, they do all have the same volume and they're all in the same fluid. So in order to answer this question, we would need to say, um, we're trying to calculate the buoyant force on each one. And so we would use this function for the buoyant force. Now remember, this is the density of the fluid, the volume of displaced water, and the gravitational field. So the density of the fluid in all cases is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed and the volume of all of the blocks all of the volumes are exactly the same so that implies that all three of those blocks should have the same buoyant force because all the other values are exactly the same so the answer right there would be D so even though they're floating at different heights, that doesn't really make any difference whatsoever. They do all have the same buoyant force acting on them. All right, guys, uh, here's the next multiple choice question. We see that it, it has this strange container with all these odd shapes above it filled with some fluid. And it says in this figure to the right, fluid fills the container shown here. At which of the indicated points is the pressure the greatest? Now, first of all, it's not to the right, it's above, but that's irrelevant. Um, hopefully when you see this, you start to think of the equation pressure equals rho times H times G plus P naught. Rho being the density of the fluid, H being the depth, depth within the fluid, G being the gravitational field, and P naught being the atmospheric pressure. Now, in this case, to me, it looks like they're all at exactly the same depth and they're all open containers, which means they're all experiencing atmospheric pressure. They also all have the same fluid. So if rho is the same for all points and um, the depth is the same for all points, let me go ahead and write this here for the more visual. Uh, G is the same, obviously, for all points, then that would mean that the pressure is the same for all points. So the answer would be E. Now let's just go ahead and talk about this. This is really important because to some people this is counterintuitive, especially for a weird shaped container piece like this, right? Remember, it doesn't really matter. You might be thinking like, well, the, the top of the water um, is not at the same, you know, like there's pieces of the pipe in between that. It doesn't matter because remember the fluid is able to um, flow and it can fill the container space. So that means that if fluid pushes down at the top, it pushes kind of in that snaking pattern, like a little conga line, right? It doesn't have to push straight down to have the same uh, force. So that's the answer. Let's move on to the next one. All right, here's our first free response problem. It says that object A has a volume of 1 times 10 to the negative fifth meters cubed and a density of 1300 kilograms per meter cubed. The tension in the string to which object A is attached is 0 0.0098 newtons. Calculate the buoyant force on the object. So we'll start with that. Uh, we're going to start by drawing a force diagram and writing a net force statement. So we should have a tension pointing up, 
a buoyant force pointing up and mg or the weight pointing down our net force is then f net is equal to these two are positive so fb plus tension minus mg equals zero and then i can plug my values in now unfortunately when i go to do that i realize i don't have the mass uh, but I do know that the expression rho times V or density times volume will give me the mass. And I have both the density and the volume. So if I do the density times the volume, I get this for the mass, 0 0.013 kilograms. Now I can plug everything else in. And after doing some simple algebra, I find that my answer is this. All right, next part B asks us to calculate the density of the liquid. Um, and the density of the liquid, I can use the Boyne force equation that we came up with in the last video, uh, part four. And so I know that that equation is um, B is equal to rho times V times G. And if I plug the values in now that I have for that, um, I can solve for rho first, so I'll do B divided by V times G, all of which I have, and that should give me the density of the liquid. So with those values plugged in, let's see, I have 0 0.1202, and then I have to divide that by the volume, which is one um, times 10 to the negative fifth and then I have to multiply that by G and I'm using 10 for G and so my answer is 1202 I'll go ahead and put that in there and that is going to be in kilograms per meter cubed Next, it says that um, some of the liquid is now drained from the tank until only half of the volume of the object A is submerged. Would the tension in the string to which the object A is attached increase, decrease, or remain the same? Justify your answer. All right, so if we think about it, if we have half the volume submerged, so if the volume decreases, the buoyant force will also decrease. So now if I go back to my net force statement, let me make some room here for everything. Um, going back to my net force statement, I see that if the buoyant force decreases, in order to stay equal to mg, the sum of b and t would um, have to stay the same. But if b decreased, t would have to increase. So the tension would actually increase. So I just showed that mathematically. But it also makes sense, right? If you think about it, um, people do exercise and aerobics programs in water when they have problems with their joints because it reduces some of the downward force, right? Um, therefore, if you only had um, air around you, which has much less buoyant force, basically none, then you would be feeling a lot of or all of your weight, whereas when you're in the water, your weight's less. So we actually refer to this as apparent weight and apparent weight is your weight in air minus the buoyant force, and that leaves you with your apparent weight or what you appear to weigh in the water. All right, so here we have, uh, for your response two, while exploring a sunken ocean liner, the principal researcher found the absolute pressure on the robot observation submarine at the level of the ship to be about 413 atmospheres. The inside of the submarine is kept at atmospheric pressure. The density of seawater is 1,025 kilograms per meter cubed. A, calculate the gauge pressure on the sunken ocean liner. So we know that from our previous videos, the absolute pressure includes the atmospheric pressure and this piece, which is the gauge pressure. So if we're just looking for the gauge pressure, we know that at sea level, that's one atmosphere. And we can therefore just subtract out the, the one atmosphere and we are left with 412 atmospheres for the gauge pressure. Part B says to calculate the depth of the sunken ocean liner. So here, hopefully you're thinking to use uh, pressure equals rho times G times H, and we are looking for H here. Now what's really important is that 
when we plug in the density that they've given us there for the row and we use uh, G, we need to make sure that we convert the atmospheres into Pascals because this equation um, comes out in Newtons per meter squared, which is a Pascal. So basically what I need to do is say that one atmosphere is equal to 1.01 times 10 to the fifth Pascals. So if I multiply uh, one atmosphere times 412, I'll convert into Pascals and then with some simple algebra and plugging in the other values that I have, I find that the, the height or the depth is somewhere around 4,140 meters. Now, if you use, if you round slightly differently than that, you're gonna get a slightly different answer. All right, part C says, calculate the magnitude of the net force due to the fluid pressures only on a viewing port of the submarine at this depth if the viewing port has a surface area of 0 0.0100 meters. So here, hopefully you're thinking, well, if I'm trying to figure out force and I know pressure, then I know that P equals F over A, and they just gave me A so I can solve for F. Now, something to keep in mind is that they did say in the beginning that they're inside the submarine, we're at atmospheric pressure. So we can use just the gauge pressure here because um, we know that if inside the submarine is atmospheric pressure and we're ignoring then the atmospheric pressure that's pushing down on the water from the top, then I just need to use the gauge pressure in order to calculate the force. So if I plug in uh, 412 for um, the pressure and I divide that by the area, I get um, approximately 416,000 416, newtons. Part D then says, what prevents the net force found in part C from accelerating and moving the viewing port? Now, it's important to realize that from part C, that's not actually a true net force because we have to keep in to consideration that the, the glass or the viewing port window is connected to the actual submarine body. And so we're ignoring some other forces there, like the normal forces that are um, pushing against like the, the window and the framing. And so really it's that part C is not taking into account all the forces. It's just looking at the force from the pressure.